let me take you back in time. We're in Louisiana and it's 1958. I'm being walked to school for the first time by my mother. I'm excited, she's excited. It's an exciting day, you know what it's like. But I need to share the context of what is taking place. We're in the deep south. I'm in a segregated town in which the KKK regularly would come on weekends and burn a cross in somebody's yard. I'm going to a segregated school. My mother has an eighth grade education. And my father was taken out of school in third grade to work to take care of his family. He couldn't read or write, but he was the smartest man I knew. I didn't have successful, educated role models in my life. But what I did have, I had the hopes and the dreams of my mother, who taught me at a very early age that I could face any challenge or adversity put in my path by being compassionate and being kind, that I could conquer the world. My mother was known for her compassion and kindness, and she was loved in, in her community. Can you imagine? She had eight children of her own, and she made the decision to foster eight neighboring children whose mother had passed away so they wouldn't be separated. Her doors were always open, her pots were always full, bubbling with amazing food. I think I may have mentioned she was an amazing cook. If I didn't, she was. And we would all be waiting in line for whatever she was cooking that day. And I tell you, if you weren't there when she turned the pot off, you didn't get any because there were a lot of people waiting for whatever it was she was cooking. In 1970, I graduated from a segregated high school after being bused past two all-white schools that were better equipped. But I have to say, I was very well-educated. I had great teachers who prepared me for university. I made the decision not to go to the historical black college that was near my home, but to go a little further afield, to go to Louisiana State University. Louisiana State University had to be forced under a court order to take non-white students. So let me be clear, I was not entering a welcoming, hospitable environment. I was entering a hostile environment. When I started at LSU, David Duke, the famous former Grand Wizard of the Klan, was a student on campus. And he was preaching the same hatred, anti-Semitism, white supremacy that he preached last year in Charlottesville, Virginia. So I had to flex those adversity muscles that my mother had trained me to use and remember what she taught me about kindness. And I forged forward. I was harassed in my dormitory. I had a world-renowned historian use the N-word regularly in a classroom. One of my professors gave me an F in a class, and when I asked why he'd given me the F, he said to me, if you don't know the answer to that question, you don't need to be here. But what he didn't understand was that failure was not an option for me. Failure was not an option. So again, I flexed those muscles. And in 1974, I graduated from Louisiana State University. I would go on to the University of Wisconsin to graduate school. And I want to stop here for a moment. I want us to go back. Remember where I started. Segregated community, segregated schools, poor, undereducated parents. 
I was moving forward. After graduating from the University of Wisconsin, I would go on to join the Foreign Service and become a diplomat. And my career would take me to far-flung places around the world. But in April 1994, I would arrive in Kigali, Rwanda. And you will recall that in April 1994, there was a genocide in Rwanda. I was confronted by a glazed-eyed young man who had been given instructions to kill a woman by the name of a goth. And he thought that I was a goth. And interestingly, I didn't panic. I was afraid, don't get me wrong, but I didn't panic. And I looked that young man in the eyes and I asked him his name. And I told him mine. I wanted him to know my name because if he killed me, I wanted him to know the name of the person he'd killed. And I brought out my improved diplomatic smile that my mom had taught me. And I used the power of kindness and compassion, and I would survive. Sadly, a goth would be killed, along with 800,000 other people in Rwanda. It changed my life forever. I would go on in my Foreign Service career, and in 2010, while serving as a U.S. ambassador to Liberia, I would be gr granted a Louisiana Legend Award. I still laugh at that. I, I call myself a legend in my own, own mind. Uh, but it was a pretty big award. And that same year in 2010, Louisiana State University, the same Louisiana State University that I'd experienced the hostility at in the 1970s, gave me an Alumnus of Distinction Award. And as I thought about what I was going to say during that speech, I decided I needed to be thankful. That there was no reason for me to feel any anger or an antipathy toward this university that had made me into the person I am today. In 2012, the university would invite me to give the commencement address. Imagine, I had gone on that campus in 1970, unwanted, and I go back in 2012 and give the commencement address in front of 5,000 people. And I thank the university. I thank the university for giving me the experiences that made me into the successful person I had become. So let me conclude. Adversity is a source of strength. Every single time you're tested, you flex your adversity muscles, and you grow stronger but you also have to add a measure of kindness and a measure of compassion with that as well, and a smile. And so anytime you face some challenges in your life, you just pull out those muscles and you remember how you dealt with it in the past and you move forward. That is the legacy that I want to leave to my children, to my grandchildren, and to your children. That's the legacy that I inherited from my mother. Thank you.